Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Theta.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And today certainly has a Zen 2 flavour. We're going to start with Donny Bolgroski over at AMD commenting that the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs will perform identically on older motherboards. So, for example, if you're planning to plonk a 3800 CPU in your X370, you don't need to worry about the performance being hampered because of the older board. Just because the X370 exists, he explains, and just because the X370 is the most advanced chipset you can get in 2019, that doesn't mean that the B450 or X470 chipset is no longer relevant. If someone is searching for a platform and doesn't really need enthusiast class PCIe uh, Gen 4 storage, or you're not planning to buy a PCIe Gen 4 graphics card in the market in the next six months to the year, it makes sense for us to look at the lower tier boards like the X370 or B450, which will offer the same performance on those Gen uh, third generation Ryzen processors as the X570 will. The only limitation of these advanced devices can't use all the extra bandwidth, but the benchmarks we're still seeing exceptionally fast performance from third gen Ryzen. Third gen Ryzen is very, very advanced chip. Thanks to the incredible IPC increases, Ryzen doesn't need much more than the B450 or X470 platforms and will deliver the highest tier performance and very power low power usage. Our partners are looking at the most prolific boards in the X370 and B350 lineup and if they can upgrade them with beta BIOSes, they're doing that. So this news actually follows on from confirmation from AMD's Robert Halleck that boards older than the 500 series will not support PCIe 4.0. So AMD have to walk back on that they're stating that they don't want a mixture of compatibility with some boards capable of uh, PCIe 4 and other boards being incapable of it. Personally, I would rather it be left down to the board manufacturers, but here's the situation we're left in. I will be very curious though regarding overclocking, particularly of a higher core count processors and also memory as well on the, let's say, older boards like the B350s, but it does look pretty good thus far. And we're going to go into some actual more benchmarks later on that have actually leaked concerning uh, the Ryzen 3000 series. If Donna's statements are accurate and the benchmarks, we're going to go more into those in just a moment because further uh, benchmarks have leaked, then I do feel that this is going to be an excellent upgrade route for those who already own a, let's say, B350 motherboard. I'm going to be curious to see what the prices are like for the X570, all of the different SKUs. We've seen that motherboard manufacturers have gone really crazy. There are so many different board variations, and it's actually a really good sign for the Ryzen 3000 series, because if you're only designing a few motherboards for a new CPU launch, it's like, well, I guess we better... But on the other hand, if you're designing like loads of different boards, you're not going to pour those engineering resources, all those man hours and woman hours into designing something if you're not actually confident that the product is going to have demand. So clearly, uh, AIBs, board manufacturers, OEMs are very, very happy with what they've seen thus far concerning the Ryzen 3000 series. And we also have a couple of other pieces of news as well. The first of which is AMD actually accidentally confirmed that 16 core processors are a thing. I will say that we've already seen multiple engineering samples of these processors. Uh, in fact, one of them actually leaked at Computex. There was a benchmark using Cinebench, and it looked really good. It was overclocked, admittedly, but even so, at the low 4 gigahertz mark, <laughs> 16 Zen 2 cores absolutely crush uh, Cinebench. But... The Gamers Nexus were discussing things with an AMD representative, and the representative accidentally confirmed that 16 core processors were indeed going to be released. They said that they started with four processor cores when they're developing Zen 2 or Ryzen 3000, and then they quadrupled it. So if you're terrible at math, 4 times 4 equals 16. I will say though that I think AMD are keeping this as like the worst kept secret ever, because they actually had the 16 core processors at Computex. It's not like someone snuck into the lab, like, all sneaky, like, it wasn't like it was Sam Fisher or they enlisted, like, Solid Snake to kind of go in for them. No, instead it was 
they actually had them on the show floor. So I think that AMD is somewhat pushing this in like the media to remind us that the 16 cores are there, but they're building the hype and anticipation and launching the 12 cores. Goodness knows when the 16 cores are going to launch. I personally think it's going to probably be later on this year. I don't think we're going to see it next year. I think it's going to be latter part of this year. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like October, November, or maybe when we hear a lot more details concerning Intel's Comet Lake as well. That might be a good time for AMD to launch it, because obviously, much like NVIDIA doing with the super series of cards goodness please don't please nvidia don't call them super rtx please don't just please uh but you know it's not uh it's not amazing it's, it's not an amazing coincidence that nvidia have done this and you know it's standard marketing 101 as soon as your competitors are getting ready to release a product you launch or uh, a new product or you do a slight price cut nvidia have been doing this for generations now so the rumors of course with nvidia is that they're going to launch a slightly beefed up versions of the 20 series that we would already know about but they're going to also have a price cut i discussed this a lot, a lot more yesterday so i suspect that's much like amd are doing with the uh, ryzen uh, 3016 core variants speaking of ryzen however uh, also from gamers nexus i'll once again link his video in the description of this very video uh, speaking with hardcore overclockers who already have engineering samples of this CPU using liquid nitrogen, people are hitting 6 gigahertz with the Ryzen 3000, although the SKU that was being used wasn't disclosed. I will say that you can't really make too much of this. It's obviously an upper limit, and most people are not going to be running liquid nitrogen, even if they are overclockers. You might have, like, a, I don't know, some type of water cooling loop, or maybe a, a decent AIO, like one back there, or you might just have a really robust air cooler. But 6 gigahertz is also the figure that the 2700X reached, I believe. Uh, so, obviously, with liquid nitrogen, it is an extreme example. We've also heard some people online say that engineering samples are allegedly hitting almost 5 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz-ish single core with overclocking, but that does seem to be a very difficult feat to uh, achieve. Frankly, when it comes to clock speed, I think it's more of a, an OCD thing. I think we just want 5 gigahertz to see 5 gigahertz. Uh, let's just be totally honest. If the CPU it performs really well the clock speed it doesn't matter so much it only matters compared to that architecture so for example if you have a pentium 4 and it hits 5 gigahertz it's going to perform a lot worse than let's say a 4770k at like four and a half gigahertz so you know gigahertz obviously do uh, heavily depend upon the architecture itself and we're going to finish the video off with a couple of additional benchmarks that have emerged online a couple of these are from Tim Apisak and also has emailed a couple of them directly as well. Uh, so we have a mixture of uh, Geekbench and also user benchmark. Now one question I get asked quite frequently is how the heck do these benchmarks even appear online? Well, I've actually heard a couple of different explanations. One actually from a board partner, believe it or not, and that is that sometimes you might get someone who is in, let's say, I don't know, the marketing department, and they just plumb forget to do it. It's less likely to be an engineer that forgets that, you know, the system goes online. But that's sometimes what happens, like either AMD forget it, or a board partner forget it, or someone actually gets hold of an engineering sample, like, uh, you know, someone working in retail or whatever. For example, we know that Puget Systems have an engineering sample CPU. They actually actually accidentally confirmed that, and they are obviously a retailer, which tells us that retailers at large or system integrators actually have these CPUs. So if you have hundreds of CPU samples in the wild, well, you get the idea. Anyway, looking at the benchmarks. We'll start things with Geekbench, because it gives us a really easy to, fill, to uh, follow number scheme. And I'm actually going to look at two variants of the 3600 they are both of course six core 12 thread processors no surprise there because they're both ryzen 5 3600 so that's been confirmed obviously all of the cpu and information remains identical but there is a score difference the single score single core score no idea why i struggled to say that is around 100 points higher with one result, whereas the other result, uh, which is multi-thread, you're looking at around a 400-point advantage. 
and also the uh, memory bandwidth has substantially increased. So what's going on here? Well, in a nutshell, it is that this particular result, that is the result to the left, the higher, uh, the higher scoring result, actually has a faster memory. The memory frequency here is running at 1464, though of course that's DDR, whereas the other one is 1331 megahertz. So this does give us some indicator of how uh, scaling works uh, in terms of memory bandwidth, although obviously this is not necessarily a good result in terms of how the games scale on the user benchmark database. The percentage here has risen from 98.3 up to 107 and also the scores have increased in kind as well. So for example if you look at the multi-core score uh, the MC int score has risen from uh, so it has increased so we have uh, 1044 versus 1038 other scores have also increased, such as the quad score performance with QC mixed rising from to 527 from just 485. So what's going on? Well, there's a couple of things. One of them is that we have faster memory frequency now. Uh, the memory frequency has actually increased with the latest results. So that obviously has a big impact. The memory now is running at 2.7 versus just 2.1 of the older sample. But the other thing, and the reason it makes it a lot more difficult to ascertain what impact the memory frequency is having, is that the actual frequency has increased as well. You'll notice that the turbo is uh, 4.05 gigahertz, so 4,050 megahertz, compared to 3,750 megahertz of the previous sample. So clearly, if you're raising the clock frequency 300 megahertz, that is going to make an impact in the performance. These CPUs do supposedly hit 4.2 gigahertz, although we don't know how this breaks down on a per core basis. And it'll be very interesting to see how well these CPUs overclock compared to their X counterparts as well. Hopefully, we can get very similar clock frequencies. But in terms of the performance, all I can say is, so far with the benchmarks, and really I'd love to see a couple of others, such as Cinebench or whatever as well, but overall it looks like, well, the best way I can describe the 2600X versus the 3600X is, well, demolition. It's about 25-ish percent faster, obviously it does depend on how tweaked and uh, the actual setup of the 2600 but it is significant, once again, around 20 to 30% difference, so around 25% on average. And as I mentioned previously against the 8700K, uh, we are also see the 8700K either roughly perform equally to the 3600 or actually loses to the 3600, and the IPC seems to be slightly lower as well. Judging from the numbers that we've got so far, it does seem that AMD have an IPC advantage over Intel. So I do believe that the 3600 is going to be a very nice process of gaming. And we also, of course, had the leaked PUBG result as well. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you did, like, share, comment, and subscribe, because it does help us out an absolute ton. And, well, hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.